this is Debbie from Lambda Design and thank you for joining me for Doodling with Debbie. My love of watercolouring is still going strong and so when I see new supplies I'm always looking for a good image to paint and the Sunday afternoon set from Simon Stamp has some great images just perfect for a spot of colouring. Today I want to talk about powering through that ugly phase in a painting which is so common when watercolouring and is a point that a lot of people give up and yet by pushing through and working things out, then the end result is something to be happy about. So here's the Sunday afternoon set, great images and a nice mix of fonts for those that like big sentiments and those that like a skinny strips for their greetings too. There are matching dyes for this set also. I placed a piece of Fabriano Artistico Extra White Cold Press Watercolour Card in the Mini Misty and stamped one of the large ice cream sundae images in Gina K Whisper Amalgam Ink. I had to stamp several times to get the light ink to show up enough that I could see it clearly. I taped the card to a board to prevent warping when I add in water washers, which I do for the background later on. However, to start with, I'm using two small round synthetic brushes, one with a concentrated mix of Daniel Smith Pyro Scarlet and one with water. I added a line of colour in the area which would expect to be shaded on the strawberry and then pulled the colour out with a damp brush, diluting the paint as it did so and creating a lighter highlight area on the berry. While the paint was still wet, I added a concentrated mix of pyro crimson to the nooks and crannies to deepen the shadows. I worked around the image, painting three of the berries and the straw stripes. I saved painting the final berry until later as it butted up against one I just painted and I didn't want the two berries to blend and merge together if I painted the last one before the first was fully dry. And so I progressed on to painting the berry leaves. I used a mix of undersea green with whatever was on my palette from the previous green mix and used the same method of painting a concentrated mix in the nooks of the leaf and pulling the colour out with a damp brush. This technique is a bit trickier on the leaves as they are small and trying to get a gradient from dark shadows to pale highlights in a tight space is tricky. So to help with the variation, I added a touch of green gold to the tips of the leaves as I went round painting. This is a lighter, brighter green and so helped to vary the differentiation between dark and light areas. Again, I worked my way around the Sunday, painting only the leaves which didn't touch each other until the first ones were dry and I could go back in and paint the others. I added in that final strawberry at this stage too. For the chocolate sauce, I mixed transparent red oxide with sepia to get a rich milk chocolate colour. And it's at this point that for me, I started to have doubts. I wasn't sure I'd got the look of the highlights on the sauce right. I wanted it to appear shiny and I hadn't achieved that. I left the sauce alone for a minute and worked on the glass. And again, I started to hit issues. I wasn't finding that the glass looked right. I know a lot of people paint glass with a blue tint, but in my mind, the glass is clear and colourless. So I went in with a smoky grey using a dilute mix of shadow violet. I wanted there to be defined edges to the glass, followed by a highlight area, followed by more depth of colour in the centre. And also some pops of colour from the fruit inside the glass. I got to this phase and, to be honest, I nearly put my brushes down and started again. However, I know from experience that you need to push through this phase and that you can get to a result you're happy with. So to start off with, I felt the glass was floating in midair, and so I added a ground with a wash of more concentrated mix of shadow violet. This darker colour also helped to define the base of the glass. While that dried, I went back to the fruit, which having dried, were now looking rather washed out and started to add layers of colour to deepen the shadows and mid-tones while trying to maintain a highlight area. I worked on each of the three key areas of the sundae, strawberries, leaves and chocolate sauce, adding layers and trying to work in more definition and bring it to life. I returned to the glass and added a few touches of shading here and there. To bring in another summery colour, I added a light blue glow around the sundae. I used cerulean blue chromium and added touches of it around the ice cream and then used a damp brush to pull out the colour. Finally, I gave in to the blue glass thing and added muted blue to the shadows of the glass and I have to admit I started to like how the glass was taking shape now. I wanted to emphasise the hint of strawberry showing through the glass though and so I added a couple of washes of red around the rim of the glass. 
Strawberries have seeds on the outside of their skin and to hint at that texture, I added dots of deeper red over the berries and then brought in white gouache and added dots of that over the surface of the berries too. While I had the white gouache out, I painted a few highlights on the chocolate sauce and on the glass also. One final go over with some deep dark shadows and then I splattered with the white gouache and also a perfect pearl solution. Personally, I think splatter adds to the hazy summery feel to things. I set the panel aside while I worked on the sentiment. I like small skinny sentiment strips for my greetings and so I stamped one of the coordinating sentiments from the Sunday afternoon set in clear embossing ink on black card and sprinkled with white embossing powder before heat setting. I then used a clear metal edge ruler, a self-healing cutting mat and a scalpel to cut the sentiment out. With the watercolour panel now dry, I trimmed it down to fit on an A2 card base I'd cut and scored from Nina Desert Storm card in the sturdy £100 weight. I usually trim my panels down gradually, taking a little off each edge and slowly cutting the panel down until it is the right size and the focal point is positioned where I want it to be, in this case offset to the lower left. I added foam tape to the back of the panel and added it to the card base followed by the sentiment strip, again with foam tape, and I used a T-square ruler to help me keep it on straight. Finally, I added a few coordinating sequins and a couple of pearls, held in place with Gina Connect glue, to uh, bring a bit of sparkle and shine. And that's my card for today. It certainly went through an ugly phase for me, one where I definitely contemplated giving up, but I kept going and I liked the end result. I think a lot of people hit the ugly phase and give in, deciding watercolouring isn't for them. My hope is that people will keep going and find they too like their finished piece. On the Simon Says Stamp blog, you'll find a coordinating blog post as well as details of the supplies I've used. If you want to find me, I blog over at limedoodadesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.